thanks for joining me. I'm Carla with Race to Walk and today I'm going to be doing a review on The Marvelous Misadventures of Ingrid Winters by J.S. Dragonsholt. But first, before we get started, a little bit about this channel. Here we share good thoughts about good words and on Tuesdays I publish videos about books and then on Fridays I host a live Bible study on Instagram Live at Race to Walk and then I upload that here later to YouTube. So if you're interested in any of those things, be sure to like and subscribe and then also to be sure to hit the bell for notifications so you can get updates on new videos. So a little bit about this book. Um, the way I came across this is uh, if you're not familiar with um, Kindle First Reads or they've changed the name of it a couple times. I don't remember what they're calling it now, but they, if you are a member of Amazon Prime, uh, they have an option where you get to pick a free book every month and it's from a certain selection. And when they first started it, I think it was like three books. You could choose one of the three. And then they they changed it, I think now they have five or six. And when I first started getting those free books, I was super excited. I was like, awesome, this is the coolest thing ever, getting free books. But then, you know, as time went on, I was just overall really kind of disappointed in the books that I got. I, you know, I just, maybe it was just, I made poor choices, I don't know. I just, they all in general felt very formulaic. It felt like, the books were written to get a movie deal. You know, they were really kind of surface. There was not a lot of like going down in. I just, there really wasn't anything that I can even remember loving or just thinking, oh, I am so glad I got this book. This is just an amazing, uh, amazing book. Except for this book. I do really, really like this book. And ironically, this is probably the lowest rated book that I've gotten out of Kindle Reads just in general, like for what most people think about it, um, out of all the ones I've read, which is just bizarre to me. But uh, this is, as I said, this is uh, published by J.S. Drangsholt, and it was actually originally written in Norwegian, and it sounds like it was pretty popular in Norway because um, from what I read, there is a, um, it's been option for a movie. And then it was translated by Tara F. Chase. And um, so this is a story about a um, Ingrid Winters, who is a professor of literature. She's married, she has three kids, and her life is kind of a mess. Or it's, she has, you know, really kind of has it all, but she doesn't have it all together. She's has a great husband, but you know, they're kind of becoming a little distant. She has a job where she's been given some um, some responsibility of that responsibility didn't always work out and you know she's really um, frustrated by some of the pressures and some of the different manipulations and maneuverings in the administration um, and that's kind of a whole different theme. And then, you know, she's always, it seems like she's always kind of searching for just the right thing to get it all together. So she's a working mother of three and she always feels like she doesn't quite measure up, you know, at the school to what everybody else is doing, that there's all these expectations. So there's this whole level of expectations that she's trying to measure up to and not, you know, she kind of feels like she's scattered and kind of feels like she's drowning a little bit. And um, I think what's kind of funny about some of the the uh, comments or the negative comments, reviews on Amazon is that they're like, you know, she just seems to, you know, ditzy to be a professor. And I think that maybe they're forgetting that this dialogue in here, a lot of it is eternal dialogue. You are hearing what she's thinking and how she's feeling and her different thoughts. And that doesn't mean that's what she's showing you know, to the outside all the time, although she does do some quirky things, but, um, you know, I think that you would be surprised at the number of people who their internal dialogue is just like this, I think, sometimes. But the other weird comment, uh, weird to me, it's just, I, I, it's just surprising to me that people kind of miss the point. So somebody said, well, she's using all these big words and da 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 And the thing was, so there was this whole, um, 
initiative at her college that they're, I don't even remember what they call it, but this whole, they have this whole long multi-word um, description of this effort, basically to go and um, collaborate with a university in Russia. Russia. And I think that re that person that wrote the review was missing the point that the writer was actually mocking it. I mean, she was just, you know, basically the whole point of it was is that, you know, their goal is to sit there and educate students, but they waste all this time and effort on meaningless things. I mean, she was mo is basically mocking the futility of some of those things in academics. So as I said, one of these recurring themes is like her life is just kind of chaotic and there's always this feeling of not quite measuring up. And um, she's one of the, the, the themes that runs through it is she talks about her, the, the character's dissertation was on to home, which was the abyss in Genesis. And um, somebody made a, like this weird comment on that too and I was like you're again you're missing the point I thought it was good but anyway I want to read this kind of what she's talking about like there and this isn't going to be a Bible study video I promise but um, I'm going to read this the Genesis 1 um, out of the this is the New English translation of the Septuagint so the Septuagint was the Hebrew Bible translated into Greek about 200 years before Jesus was born. Because the Hellenistic Jews had, you know, basically lost the language and so they translated the Bible into Greek. What's interesting about the Septuagint is that it gives us a picture of how the writers at that time understood the passages. So basically how they translated it is really kind of a commentary on it. But what I really like about Genesis 1 is that I think it gives, um, a different sense of the verse uh, than some of our other translations. And so this is Genesis 1. In the beginning God made the heaven and earth, yet the earth was invisible and unformed, and darkness was over the abyss. And this is what she refers to as to home in the, in the book. And the divine wind was being carried over the water. So when I read this, there's more of a sense of action of a, you know, this uh, kind of rumbling that was there. And the abyss is actually, is what is referred to in Revelation when, you know, death and the grave are thrown into the abyss and finally conquered. So, you know, when we go into the next part of Genesis, it said, and God spoke, let there be light. And so basically there he's speaking and subduing that chaos and the abyss. And at the end of the book, um, or towards the end of the book, someone uh, was talking to um, Ingrid and saying, you always seem like you're sitting in a corner throwing words at the dark and trying to keep it back. And um, so I think there's a lot of parallels there. You know, God gave us this direct directive to, you know, subdue the earth. We're supposed to, you know, subdue the chaos. And that's kind of what it's like. We all have some chaos in our life that we have to learn how to subdue. This is the thing. It's just a funny story. I, I like it. I it was really surprised when I read all the, like, bad reviews on it. Again, some people have no taste and no discernment, I guess. I don't know. But, um, so anyway, towards the end, it, there's all these different things that kind of come to a boil uh, at the end and there's issues with her kids school they buy a ha house uh, and that they is really kind of too much for them again adding to the chaos and then in her job she, she sent off to Russia with this team to try to get a connection between the university in Russia and her university in Norway. And so there's just a series of kind of comical events. And then um, she gets in, gets herself into kind of a mess. Um, she does make some mistakes, but in the end, and to me, she gets a little bit clearer perspective of, you know, really what is going on in her life. Um, I will say there is a bad word in it about 
three quarters of the way through. It's not gratuitous or anything. It's part of the narrative, but you know, if you don't like any swear words in your fiction at all, then you might want to give this a pass, but it's literally one word and it's, it's actually kind of part of the story, but I like the story. It was fun. Um, I read it originally when it was on that Kindle first reads three years ago and I just read it again to do this review and I enjoyed it just as much the second time as I did the first time. I also, you know, if they really do release a movie, I go and watch the movie. I mean, even if I had to watch it in subtitles, I think I'd watch it. So anyway, um, that's my review. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.